could you please introduce yourself and your novel in short? Sure, thank you. Um, my name is Brooke Davis and I wrote a book in English, it's called Lost and Found and I wrote it as part of a PhD at Curtin University in Perth in Australia and um, it's from the point of view of three different characters. One is a little girl called Millie Bird and the other is an 82-year-old woman called Agatha Panther and the third is an 87-year-old man called Carl the Touch Typist. Um, at the beginning of the book, uh, the little girl has just been abandoned in a department store by her mum and the older lady has not left her home in seven years since her husband died and the older man has just escaped from his nursing home and that's the point where all three characters meet and they go on a road trip across Australia together. Um, it will be a long one. Uh, your novel is very uh, funny in many ways, but uh, its most important topics are grief and death. Um, these uh, topics are more or less uh, taboos in our uh, world these days. So um, please tell me about these taboos from your point of view. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it was not something I'd really thought about much until my own mum died, and that happened about eight years ago. Um, I really, I didn't even really realise that there was a taboo around it, because I, I just, I mean, all those kind of inevitable deaths had happened to me, you know, the my dogs had died and my grandparents had died, and, and I understood that that's how life worked, but how I didn't understand that life, that that's how life worked, was that anyone you loved could just die at any moment. I didn't really understand that. And when that happened, it, um, yeah, it sparked a long kind of process of thinking really deeply about, um, about how to be content in, in a world that, um, that that can happen. Um, and so, I think I, I I learned really quickly that the way I want to live is to not kind of give in to those those topics being taboo, you know, and and try to work out um, how I can have a a kind of healthy attitude towards um, towards those things and, and still live a, a life that I am. Um, where I'm not kind of uh, hiding under my covers all the time, you know, and, and being sad all the time. So it's, I think it's, it's been something that has, has kind of rocked my world, but in a, in a, in also a really, really good and, and beautiful way, I think. Um, what exactly mean uh, that in a beautiful way? Oh by a beautiful way. Um, I think it's made me um, have or given me just better perspective, you know. Um, and and I, I always get really um, wary of, of talking about it in this way because I don't ever want to, to say that my mum's death was any kind of gift, you know. That's not how I ever want to frame it. But there is that feeling that, um, and I guess it's just from from living a life. But that that from her death, I I now have that that thing that that pulls me back whenever I get sucked into the noise, the stupid noise of life. You know, when even just coming here, I was standing in a line to get on the plane, and I was getting really frustrated. There were kids screaming around me, <laughs> and. And someone kept hitting me, hitting my bag, and I was starting to get really annoyed. And then there's that moment where you get sucked into those those feelings. But having that knowledge that I'm alive and everyone I love is is healthy at the moment, and and that's all that really matters. Um, it pulls me out of those those kind of really negative crappy <laughs> moments really easily and it's and that is and it makes me 
live a better life, makes me a better person, it makes me more empathetic, it makes me enjoy myself a hell of a lot more. And so I think it is a really beautiful thing. I agree. Um, do you need or do you have a special place or ritual or panel or whatever else for writing? Um, I, 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 I write at home a bit and I also write it in, in my, my room. I, I share a house with two other people. And so when I was writing this novel, I, I wrote a lot of it in my actual room. And so I had this, um, uh, at one point when I finished the first draft, I, I cut it all out into pieces and, and hung it around my room on clothes pegs on string just so it was my whole room was filled with pages of this book just so I could see it you know and could move it around and that was a a great idea and also an awful idea because I it really helped me to make connections I didn't know existed but it also made me feel like a complete crazy person <laughs> surrounded by my own words all day every day um But I was a student and I didn't, I couldn't afford to, to have a space, my own space, you know. Um, I also write a lot at, at cafes and, and public places. Um, and that's a really, that's a really important part of my work too, I think, because I, I love um, having that visual of, of the way people move and speak with each other really informs my writing as well. Mostly, I mean, my in terms of making it in, in, into a ritual or routine, I just make sure I set aside six hours a day when I'm working on on something, um, and they can be at any time. I try to bookend my days with 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 actual physical movement because that's a, a really important part of of my writing. I think as well to do things outside of it. Um, and I love being social as well, so I, I try to have um, those those things in place that keep me kind of healthy and clear in in my mind as well. Yeah, but you mentioned before that um, you've already um, visited Budapest before. So, what, what do you think about this place? Uh, do you have any you know favorite places? Yeah, I have been. I have a really good friend who lives here, a Hungarian friend. Um, I've been here a couple of times. The last time I came was 10 years ago, so it was a yeah, a long time ago. Um but I I just really love walking around this city. I just find the people really interesting and that's um I that's what I'm really most looking forward to actually is kind of just being in it and I also of course love the buildings and the um We don't really have anything like that in Australia. What, what is your pa favorite part of your novel? Oh my God, no one's ever asked me that. Um, if I say this, it might be a spoiler because it's near the end. Um, but there's a particular scene between Carl and Agatha that I, um, when they're on uh, in the desert together, um, I that's my favorite scene. Um, just because it, it came out really easily and I had no idea um, if I was going to write it or if I wanted it in the book. Um, but, yeah, and it's pretty much word for word how I first wrote it, which never happens to me. I usually rewrite and like incessantly. But, um, but, yeah, I just – I love the kind of – the freedom and joy of um, – and the surprise of that scene, even for myself. I really, really loved writing that. And what was the hardest part? Oh, man. That's a, that's a really beautiful question because a lot of it was hard. Um, and I... Because it... I mean, it's obviously a, a work of fiction, um, but, I mean, it, it, there's so much of it that comes from a really personal place of, of emotional truth. Um I think, I mean, kind of physically, the the hardest part, there's a scene near the beginning of the book where, um, from the point of view of Carl, the 87-year-old man, and his wife is dying, and 
I remember sitting in a cafe and I was bawling my eyes out writing that and it would have I would have looked like a complete moron <laughs> but I just didn't care and I just wasn't really thinking about anybody else um because I there was so much of that that I was kind of tapping into um the stuff that had happened to me or that I knew had happened to other people and so though just those moments where I was really um uh, connecting to something that had happened in in my life, they were really really difficult, but I, but I also loved it at the same time. I loved that that um, that chance to 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 write those difficult things and see if I could do them, you know. And and that was, um, I yeah, God, I loved that chance to do that. You mentioned uh, after, the, after the end of your novel that uh, your brother in Romania uh, did, didn't want to read your novel. Why? <laughs> no, he did read it. He just read it and then didn't say anything, <laughs> uh, <laughs> whether he liked it or not. <laughs> um, and he was just a typical younger brother at that time. Um, he... And and yeah, and now he sort of said to me, he he hates that I put that in there. By the way, <laughs> he's like, I did read it and I really liked it, and I said you didn't tell me. <laughs> and so now he he tries to put into language how he feels about my writing. Um, but my older brother was exactly the opposite, and um, and I don't think with my younger brother it was any. He just didn't know how to say that he liked it, you know, and. Um, he had more important things to do, like travel around Romania. <laughs> um, but my older brother, he's a writer as well. Um, yeah, he read every single draft and gave me amazing feedback. And 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 it really helped me immeasurably in writing this book. So um, my younger brother didn't help me so much, but um, he... He's he's come with me on a lot of my um, my touring with this book, so he's kind of made up for it and has been very supportive of me in other ways. <laughs> you teach uh, creative writing, uh, so I wonder what would be your primary advice for beginner, beginners. Sorry, mm. um, it's it's strange. It's always strange um, having to answer this question because I always feel like I'm still a beginner, you know. Um, but I think the, the things that really helped me the most is there's this beautiful quote by a guy called Ira Glass who does the those This American Life podcast things. Awesome. And I'm going to completely butcher his quote because I can't remember it, but it's something about how when you begin writing, you your taste in reading is so, so good, but you're... Your writing doesn't match that yet. And then the the only way to, to close that gap between you and them is a sheer volume of work. And I love that, the idea that it's just the only way to get better is reading and writing and reading and writing and reading and writing. It's the absolute 100% only way to do it. And I love that. Anyone who tells you differently is kind of lying to you. Um, I also love this other um, quote by Hemingway of all people... Um, and he swears, obviously, because he's Hemingway. Um, so I might have to swear. But he says the first draft of anything is always shit. And I love that as well because it gives you that. It always gives me freedom to just go for it in those opening times, you know, and and enjoy enjoy taking risks and seeing what I can do and knowing that that won't be the thing that everybody sees. But... Um, I think that is really important to give yourself that permission to to fail, <laughs> and he and that quote always reminds me of that. Okay, um, you're on a tour around the world these days, um, but I wonder how your uh, usual normal day looks like. Not sitting in a cafe in Budapest, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah, when I when I'm writing, when I'm writing um, kind of seriously on something, I'll usually I'm a very much a morning person, and 
I I love to get up and ride my bike. I've got this I live on the ocean in this idyllic kind of place in in Perth and I go on a ride as the sun comes up and um and then come back and do about a few hours of work and then have a break and and then work for a few more hours and then um do a bit more exercise um as the sun's going down and and that's really it. It's a very kind of quiet um Focus life when I'm writing. I also work as a book at a bookshop, um, so there are days when I'm doing that as well. Um, but yeah, mostly I try to keep when I'm writing. I try to keep life pretty calm and quiet, but try to keep things nice and quarantined so that I'm living a really balanced life as well. I I don't. I love writing, and I want it to be my life, but I want to do other things too. So I want to make sure that I. Um, I keep in, involved in, in other things as well. It's very easy to kind of disappear into a bit of a writing cave when you're doing things like this. So um, I try to um, to be kind of smart and healthy about it. Um, you mentioned um, that you work in a bookshop. Uh, does it mean that uh, you ever had to sell your own book? <laughs> yeah, that's really weird. Um, I... It's funny, people come up to the counter sometimes with, with the, my book and they don't know that I've written it and that's always a really weird moment for me and I'll, I'll say something like, oh, would you like me to sign this that book for you? And they kind of look at me like, what, are, are you a crazy person? <laughs> um, and then I have to say, oh, no, I'm not signing all the books. So this one I actually wrote and I have to show them the picture and say, see, that's actually me. <laughs> um But the the beautiful thing about my bookshop is that my colleagues work so hard at selling my book. Pretty much every person who walks into the bookshop, they make buy my book. That's how you that's how you get your book to be a bestseller. Is <laughs> your friends sell it for you. So I don't really have to do any selling of my own book. Um, but it's definitely been a a really unique experience. I think to have that direct connection with someone who's about to read your book um, and it's been a, a lot of fun yeah what do you think about the Hungarian publication of your book oh I love it I love the design of it um, and I love that it has all four characters on it not everyone has Manny on it as well and it's to be honest I it's really just still mind-blowing that it's in any other language other than Australian English <laughs> I thought I always thought it was just this weird little Australian book and the thought that it's in any other country at all is um, I'm still waiting for someone to kind of tell me it's all a big joke <laughs> what do you think why, why is it such a huge success um I think I honestly, and this is not being self-deprecating. I think there's there's always a bit of luck around these things. There's there's timing. Um, the the market is is looking for a certain thing at a certain time, and I think my book came along at that time, which was very lucky. Um, and I guess there is. I mean, we're all born. We we all die. We all. We all feel grief, no matter where we come from, you know, and 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 that's what the book's about, I guess. And so, there's and and perhaps in amongst all that um, all that kind of sadness, we have to find a way to kind of laugh about it, and maybe that's a universal thing as well. So I don't know. That's the only thing I can think of: but luck and and a bit of universality. I think. You've written on my paper. Uh There's just one more question. Uh, so, is there a question that uh, no one asked in an interview before, uh, but you'd like to answer? Um. <laughs> I. Uh, oh wow! I don't know. I've never th that one. <laughs> that question that you just asked me. Um, I just had a. Just today I had a really beautiful question that I had never been asked before and it is strange um, to be asked questions these days that you've ne you've never been asked before. Um, and she asked me if I was 
there's a section in the book where where Carl talks about we're all a little too something, um, and she asked me, um, "What what am I to something?" You know, and I loved that, and I was completely stumped, and I didn't know how to answer it, and it was just lovely to to not know the answer. So um, I have completely avoided your question because I can't. I, I don't know. I mean, I like I like the. It'd be nice to be asked a really simple question like what your favourite colour is or something. No one ever asks me those questions. <laughs> and it's red, by the way. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I actually had something in my mind uh, to ask uh, some uh, pairs uh, of you. Um, I mean, um, for example, beer or wine? <laughs> Depends where I am. If I'm in... If I'm in um, Germany or the Czech Republic, I'm beer. But if I'm in Hungary, I'm wine. <laughs> if I'm in Australia, I'm wine. So um, definitely I love a, a beautiful red wine. So I had some beautiful red wine here last night. Okay. Uh, cats or dogs? Oh, dogs. Easy dogs. I'm allergic to cats and, and dogs that are much more awesome. <laughs> Night or day? day morning um okay um city or village oh village i think though i kind of live in a city but i village mm. how about your friends i mean uh, uh men or women oh ah 50-50 i have men and women friends And I, I need them both, I think, because they bring different things. Am I allowed to say both? Okay. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's, that's all for now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. <laughs>